hashing. This video begins the hashing section. Here is the first video, MD5 and SHA hashes. After explaining what a hash function is, I'll show you MD5 and then the SHA family, SHA1, SHA2, and SHA3, and then a little bit of information about cracking hashes, which is a difficult but very simple task. So the point of a hash is to make a fingerprint of a file. You take all the bytes in the file and combine them together with a hash algorithm, and this creates a fixed links hash value. If you change any part of the file and recalculate the hash, you get a completely different value. So the idea is, if you have two files that are supposed to be identical, you can calculate the hash of each file, and if the hash of the two files match, the files are identical. A very common hash is MD5. It's been around for a couple of decades. It's 128 bits long, which is rather short for a hash function, and it's reliable enough for most purposes. People use it to put a fingerprint on downloads and malware samples and all sorts of things, and sometimes to obscure passwords. It's not a perfect hash function. There are some collisions known, and there are some algorithms that at the expense of some computer time can create collisions, which are pairs of files that hash to the same value. So if you do find two files with MD5s that match, you do not know with complete certainty that they are identical files, but usually they are. It's very easy to calculate them in Python. You just import the hash library, and then this construction here looks a little awkward, but you calculate, you call the hash library to create a new object. The first parameter is the algorithm used, which is MD5. The second parameter is the contents of the data to be hashed. Here I used hello. And then you have to put this dot hex digest at the end, or it will just print an address to a data structure instead of showing you the actual value. And here you see the hash of hello, an MD5 hash in hexadecimal, and it's 128 bits long. So that's 128 over 4 or 32 hexadecimal characters. And if you add an another character to the hello, like an exclamation point here, you notice the hash changes completely. There's no resemblance into the hash of one value and the hash of the next. The secure hash algorithm was designed to be an improvement on MD5, and SHA-1 had no collisions until about a year ago. Some researchers at Google found out how to make collisions in SHA-1, so careful people are switching to SHA-2. There is another algorithm approved by the National Institute of Standards called SHA-3, which almost nobody is using, and as far as anyone expects, SHA-2 will remain secure for a very long time to come, but if something were to happen to compromise SHA-2, SHA-3 is available for us to use. And both SHA-2 and SHA-3 have various lengths, but the most common lengths are 256 and 512 bits. You can calculate SHA-1 and SHA-2 hashes easily in Python, but SHA-3 is not commonly used and it's not part of this hash library yet. So if you use SHA-1 for the algorithm, you get a SHA-1 hash. It looks like an MD5 hash, but it's longer. And the next ones are SHA-256 and SHA-512, which are both SHA-2 hashes. And you can see that although they're more secure, they are much longer and somewhat less convenient. So let's take a look at these things. Here's a command line. If you go to start Python, then you have to import hashlib. And now you can do hashlib. Do. And the first parameter is the algorithm. Let's start with MD5. The next parameter is the data to hash, which I'll use hello, and then hex digest to see the hexadecimal value. So there's the hash of hello. And if I put another character at the end, like hello A, I get a completely different answer. If I want to use a different algorithm, I can just put it in here. So it's SHA1. I spelled it wrong. If I have SHA-1 here, there we go. Now I get a long hash, and if I go to SHA-2, I put 256 here, and I get an even longer hash. And those are enough hashes for almost any purpose. All right, if you have the hash value of something and you want to calculate the data it came from, in principle, there is not a unique solution, but for short objects like a password, in practice, there is. So if someone uses an MD5 function to obscure a password, which is done by some old web applications, then you can reverse it by guessing. 
passwords until you find a match. There is no mathematical way to undo a hash function, so you just have to make a library. So here, remember the MD5 of hello starts with EB6. And if you just take a series of guesses, K-L-M-N-O, when you get the right one, of course you'll get the right answer. So that's how hash cracking works. It's not a complicated idea, it's just kind of inconvenient. So I can take the MD5 of hello, and if I'm guessing, I could say M here, and that's wrong, and then N here, and then O here. And so if I were guessing words, I might have to guess millions of words to get down to this value. But if I'm able to guess the right value, I'll know it's right when the hash matches. And then the only uh, thing that determines the difficulty of this is how many hashes you can calculate per second. And MD5 and the Shaw family are designed to calculate very fast, so you can actually try millions of passwords per second with them.